one. Now, first and foremost, is going to be a sad one because it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it's the beginning of everything. And that is, number one thing is, you have to decide. What? Yeah, write it down. Decide it. You have to decide what you want. Most people say, well, I just want a pretty good life, as long as I got a nice car, as long as I got a nice house. Okay, but you still haven't decided. What does that mean? What kind of car? Two-door? Four-door? Convertible? Leather? What? What kind of car? Until then, you, you just take whatever life gives you. And if that's the way you're living, then that's fine. But you can't complain about it because remember now, you never decided. So it's like asking some, it's like someone asking you, hey, what do you want to eat? Eh, it doesn't matter. Okay, that means whatever comes and hits your plate, you got to be okay with that. Remember now, eh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's what you said. It doesn't matter. So if it's tacos, it doesn't matter. If it's chicken, it doesn't matter. If it's steak, it doesn't matter. If it's pork chops, it doesn't matter. If it's oatmeal, whatever it is, you can't, if it's just a salad, can't complain. Because why? Doesn't matter to me. You ever been somewhere and uh, you, you, you're in a place that you have, to, you have to place an order. You're standing in line to place an order. And you got this person who's right in front of you and you guys are moving in line, moving in line, moving in line, moving in line. Then they get up to the front. The person's register says, yes, uh, can I help you? Uh, let's see, um, let's see, I'm thinking, um, uh, I, I don't know yet, hold on, I don't, <laughs> you kind of go, are you, are you kidding me right now? You've been in line all this time, and yet you have not decided what is it you want? Have you been that way? Have you been in line, the line of life? 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and still going, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I want. All right. All right. You know people like that. They have not decided yet. Most people believe at the end of the day, you really can't get what you want in life. Most people. People who believe that. You clearly just can't get what you want. But those are people who have not made a decision to get what they want. So that's why they're under this, this, this misconception and this unbelief that you can't. Because they hadn't decided yet. There's a scripture in, in the Bible in Joshua. I think it's on Joshua 24. That Joshua tells the people, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose. In Deuteronomy, he tells them, I put before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose. Which means he doesn't choose for you. I know, well, I'm just going to let God pick for me. No, God doesn't pick for you. That choice is up to you. God doesn't pick your clothes. He doesn't pick the food you eat. He doesn't pick the car you drive. He doesn't pick the house you live in. Think about it. He doesn't pick the job you got. You do. But he's going to put it out there for you to choose. What do you want? What do you want? Now, the beautiful thing about it is that if he's going to give me an option to choose and he can ask me what I want, then therefore that means that there must be a menu to life. There must be a menu. So you got to choose what do you want. You got to decide. Make a decision. Do you not know that I've come to find out at least my last little 49 years of life, most folks are too scared to make a decision. Make a decision. Whatever that is, make a decision. I'm tired of this. Okay, you keep complaining every day, but you still hadn't made a decision yet. I don't like this. Yeah, you keep saying it every day, but you still hadn't made a decision yet. Make a decision. I want to do that. Yeah, you say that, but you still hadn't made a decision yet. Make a decision. I would like that. Yeah, but you still haven't made a decision yet. 
one day I'll go there. One day. What what day is that? Is that Monday? Is that the Tuesday? Is that the Wednesday? I've seen seven days on the calendar, but one day is not one of them. Someday is not one of them. See, you still hadn't made a decision yet. How about I'm going there? That's a decision. I'm going. And then put a win on it. Win. Then you go. That's a decision. That's a decision. All right? So you got to make sure the first thing you do at the end of the day, you got to be able to go ahead and make a decision. The next thing you got to be able to do is once you've made a decision, you got to believe that decision. You got to believe it. Otherwise, you're just saying things. <clears throat> Jesus told the enemy, the enemy told Jesus first, if you be the Son of God, turn these rocks into bread. Turn these stones into bread. Jesus said that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Listen, man should not live by. So he's talking about what do people live by. He said man should not live by bread alone. <clears throat> not by his outside situation. Not by his outside circumstances. He should live by the word of God. <clears throat> the word of God is what comes out of your mouth is what you believe at the end of the day. It's what you believe. It really is. Because why? That's what you will live by. That's what people live by all day, every day. Yeah, 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 I hear what you're saying, but I don't really believe that. Right, see? You live by your words. Your words is the word of God to you. It's what you're living by. It's your right of passage. It's what you live by. It's, what, it's, your, it's your compass. It's what you live by. All right? So once you decide what is it you want in life, then you got to believe you can have it. You got to believe it. It starts off with that. Because the good book says all things are possible to him who believe. So now that he decided, he actually believed that he could have it. Now that he decided, or she has decided, now they have to believe they can have it. That's where it starts. You've got to believe you can have it. Period. You've got to believe it. No matter what. So I'm going there. See, Jesus says wherever your heart is, there lies your treasure. You've got to put your heart in it. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to have that. I'm going to be that. I've decided it. Now I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe it. That's, that's my criteria. Once I decide it, I believe it. Period. Period. Now through that, I got to make sure that I continue to speak this thing over and over and over once I decide to believe it. I got to make sure I speak it over and over. But I got to make sure before I do that, once I decide it, once I believe it, now I got to start visualizing it. I got to visualize it. That's where the vision board comes from. All right, I have to see it to see it. I have to see it to see it. I have to see it to see it. It's very important you get that. I have to visualize it. Or another word I like to say all the time, um, that Habakkuk 2 says, write the vision and make it plain. That whatever man reads it will run after it. All right. So now I got to continue to visualize and see myself driving this. See myself going here. See myself receiving this. I must continue to see it over and over and over and over. So yeah, I don't have to. I don't care if you have to go ahead and grab some pictures and of you and put your face on uh, someone who's receiving a diploma. I don't care if you have to put your face on something and see yourself driving this particular car, pull up in front, uh, put, um, pull up in front of this particular house, or whatever the case may be. But you got to see it. Remember now, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Thought created what you don't see, and what you don't see created what you do see. That's the first scripture in the entire Bible. In the beginning, what happened? It all begins with thought in the beginning. 
And then what you don't see, create what you do see. For what you don't see is stronger and greater than what you do see. So now I must start creating this thing. I got to start visualizing it. I already decided what I want. Whether it be the house, whether it be the car, whether it be the job, whether it be the, um, the weight, uh, whether it be the trip, the vacation, whatever the case may be. I've already decided. Now I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I got to have enough faith. How do you get enough faith? You get enough faith by speaking it. Remember now, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Well, the mouth of God is man's thought. <clears throat> if the mouth of God speaking and God is all thought, then he speaks to man's thoughts. And why you have those aha moments like, man, you know what I was just thinking? You weren't just thinking. The ultimate thought, the big brain, the almighty spoke, and you had a moment of clarity. And now you say, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. Right. All right, so you got to first decide it, all right, and then you got to believe it. Now, the scripture says in Romans 10, uh, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. So it keeps coming right back again. So faith, so how am I going to start believing it? I'm going to start believing it by continuing to say it over and over and over and over. And remember now, faith comes by what? Hearing. Faith comes by hearing, all right? So the only way faith can come by is hearing. That's it. You can't, you can't pray for more faith. No, people do. Give me more faith. Give me more faith. It doesn't work like that. It only comes by hearing. That's the only way it comes. It's like rain. Rain only comes from the clouds. They can't, it doesn't come anywhere else. So faith only comes by hearing. Period. Increase my faith. Well, that, that's easy. You got to start hearing it. Now, it says hearing Faith comes by hearing, not having heard, not, 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 not will hear, but hearing. There's a continuous process, which means you must incorporate this big word, which produce miracles. And that's called discipline. Over and 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 over. The disciplines is what's going to create the miracle. All right? So you, so you got to decide it. You got to believe it. And then you got to visualize it. You got to see it. It's like um, a mother who's a month or two months pregnant. No one sees it at the end of the day because it doesn't reflect on the outside. But on the inside, there's something there. All right? So it's almost like you must impregnate yourself through the decision, through you believing, and now you're visualizing it. All right? There's a term for that as well. As I brought up, um, pregnant mothers, there's a thing called the um, ultrasound. And the ultrasound is a, um, equ uh, an equipment that goes by the heartbeat. And the heartbeat, at such a rapid pace, produces an image. It's sound waves. Sound waves. Sound waves. Well, the more you continue to say what you decided and what you believe and what you see yourself with, is you will create your own ultra sound. Something you can't see with the naked eye, but you will develop this visual image. So the doctor takes this, this um, equipment and of course he puts some some, some lubrication, lubrication over the, the mother to be sub, uh, stomach, and he takes his equipment and, he, and it, it picks up the sound, the very slightest and faint sound. And through that sound, it then produces an image on the screen. Well, this works the same way. As you continue to produce this sound, this ultrasound, though no one else can see it, it'll produce an image for you on your screen, on your heart, that'll keep you focus, that'll keep you committed, that'll keep you perfect peace, that'll keep you uh, at the end of the day full of joy and full of happiness and full of peace, all right? So we've talked about deciding it. We've talked about, hopefully I'll be able to get to the next one just for a minute. We've talked about believing it. We've talked about visualizing it. And now we've got to mentalize it.
You say, mentalize it. Yes, because now, it goes back to what I was saying on Tuesday. We become what we think about most of the time. We become what we think about most of the time. I told you through research that we average about 6,000 thoughts a day that come just coming all out of our place, out of our mind. So it takes very discipline to hold that thought so it, till you don't lose it. You got to hold it. You got to hold it. You got to protect it. You got to defend it. The Bible says uh, to guard our hearts at all times for that thought. The heart he's speaking of actually is the mind. You got to hold that thought. You got to preserve it and protect it. See, so whatever you mentalize is what will materialize. Whatever you mentalize, you will materialize. One good scripture says in Proverbs 23 and 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The heart refers to the mind. He believes this. And as he thinks it, that's who he really is. That's who he really is. Now, how do you condition the mind? You condition the mind... Or should I say recondition the mind by thoughts. Holding on to that same thought over and over. And it's called meditation. You can write that down. Meditation. You must meditate both day and night. That's what's in the good book of Joshua chapter 1 that God tells Joshua. He said if you meditate on the word both day and night. And do not let it depart from your mouth. You will have good success because God is tell, teaching him the same formula that he gave Moses he's telling this young man now that you're the leader you're going to do the same thing Moses did and you saw the mo miracles Moses created you're going to do the same thing but you got to meditate on it day and night why think about anything else there's nothing else to think about why give my time and effort to anything else but the very things that I want period but I must meditate. <clears throat> Do you not know that you are the potter? You are the potter. And the form, the situations and circumstances is the clay. You're forming it. But you are the potter. You got to get this. You're creating your own cup. You're creating your own through your own will. And the potter has a will. That he's, he, he puts his feet on and it, and, it, and it starts to spin. But yet he's, he's claying it. Alright. I think in Genesis 2. I want to say around verse 19. Uh, the Bible says that God had formed every beast of the earth. And brought him to Adam. To see what he would call them. He brought every form, every design, and see what he would call it. And the good book says, whatever he called it, that's what it was. That's what it was. Whatever he called it, that's what it was. Okay, so God is bringing these animals to him, and he's calling it. And whatever he called it, that's what it was. When he decided... Believed it, visualized it, and now he mentalized it. It the form. That's what it was. He just brought the form. Whatever he spoke and called it, that's what it was. You still have the opportunity to do the same thing or whatever you want. But you must first decide it. Then you must believe it. With all your heart, with all your mind. With all your might. You must believe it. Alright? Then you got to visualize it. You got to see it. You got to see yourself with it. You also got to see yourself through it. Alright? And then you got to start to, to mentalize it. You got to mentalize it. As a man think it, so is he. And that means you're able to be, to do and to have whatever you so desire in your life. But that takes commitment. 
But it also comes with responsibility, which means you're not blaming anybody else for your success or your lack thereof. It's on you. It's so powerful. As he thinks, so is he. We become what we think about most of the time. Now, I'll pick up on Tuesday on the, the last two, uh, the six laws, the six principles on how to get what you want. I hope it's been a blessing to you today. I hope you're getting started and making some decisions. How about that? Decide whatever it is you want. Decide it. And don't be up there, well, I think I want to. Uh... No, you've been in line long enough. Sit down and think about what you want and write it down. Decide what you want. And then you got to believe it. It can't be some, some, some pie in the sky idea. You got to believe it. All right? Then you got to start visualizing it, seeing yourself with it. Because you can't see yourself with it if you don't really believe it. And then start to hold that thought. Let nothing rob you of that thought. All right? Let no one pluck that out of your hand. Hold it. All right? Now I'll give you the other two on Tuesday. Again, thank you. Thanks for tuning in to Pep Talk. I'm your host. I'm your coach, Dr. Ellis. God bless you. Have a wonderful Thursday. God bless.